Uh, yesterday, a 66-year-old man from Illinois walked onto a baseball diamond in northern Virginia and shot House Majority Whip Steve Scalise. Four others, including a congressional staffer, a lobbyist who was a coach for the team. He was a former ba- uh, staffer. staffer and uh, college baseball player. And two members of the Capitol Police who were also wounded in the attack. On Wednesday morning, he single opened fire on a practice. Sh- session. Should we just say the shooter? Is that what you want to do? The That's shooter, fine with me. Yeah. The shooter. The shooter single opened fire on. A, and, and again, to reiterate, we just don't want to make that name famous. We yeah. can talk about him without without actually giving his uh, name any kind of honor. Right. Um, <clears throat> single opened fire on a practice session. Congressional Republicans for their annual charity congressional baseball game against congressional Democrats, and this raises. Several hundred thousand dollars for local boys and girls charities. Yeah. So it's the, all the people go. Oh well, they should have been at work. They shouldn't have been playing baseball. It's like they're human beings. They're allowed to have lives, and they're raising money for charity. Yeah. Which is, but if Obama does bi- it, then it's bipartisan. So exactly. Everybody just chills. They right. were the Democrats were at practice too. That's yeah. the thing. And then they all got called in. Their coach called them in, saying, "Hey, we got to get you all together and get you a secure." Breaking right. news, everybody. The Democrats and Republicans don't all hate each other. Right. Uh, well. I hate some. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's not like yeah. all war. No, all the, I mean time. this like, is what this and this is a tradition. Kind. Like it's one of the great right. traditions of bipartisanship. Everybody knows this happens, so I don't know why this is late breaking news. Because it's something to get Republicans it's, shame Republicans. It's something over. to bitch about. Yeah, it's really exactly. What it is. Like it, it, I posted a status of basically saying that the one of the most controversial, if not the most controversial, opinion in America today is that politicians are human beings. And deserve dignity and respect, and uh, <gasps> I know. And you would have thought that you should have seen the libertarian response to that. Oh boy! And uh, let me just say, I I firmly believe that statist that if we started to recognize politicians as human beings, then they would change as much as we would change in our public discourse. And I saw an MSNBC reporter on Chris Matthews last night. Uh, hardball with Chris Matthews, that's his name. Uh, and she was just saying, you know, this is the first time I've ever been on the Hill. So somebody who is the NBC congressional reporter has been there for a while. She goes, this is the first time that I've been on the Hill where everybody is being a human being first and a and a member of Congress second. And politics are taking a second place uh, to to being a human being to each other. And everybody's getting along and this has changed a lot of things. And that, that's really when I realized, you know what, we, we and our expectation of politicians are that our team is supposed to hate the other team because the other team are not human beings. They're not people. They're literally people. Eric Trump literally said that on Fox last week. What he said? He said Democrats aren't, I don't even think of them as people anymore. Right. And I mean, he says that, and like, that's the toxic, toxic environment. That's, that's what everybody's talking about. And I think that every listener of this audience, including all of our hosts and including me, have to sit and think about to to what extent do we dehumanize the people who share different opinions than us not only in uh not only in the people that we go to battle with on on facebook uh rants or on comments but also in how we talk about politicians and how we talk about these people you know the one of the i i think i would encourage everybody i wish i had the audio teed up here of joe barton talking about his son congressman joe barton's two sons were there and uh he talked about how his young son was born, and uh, he was given several gifts at that time from congressional Democrats. And he he often comes up to visit Capitol Hill, and you know he he comes over, he hugs all the Republicans, and then he immediately makes a beeline for several members of Congress who are like uncles to him, including the former J- uh, Congressman John Dingell. Um, he he says that his son is bipartisanship. That he is It's just, not politics first. It's it's that he's just seeing human beings that he's responding to and that it is uh it has been hard for his son, who is younger and below ten, I believe, to understand why anybody would want to come and just try and murder his friends. And I don't think that we as Americans have to um hate each other and demonize each other and dehumanize each other to to win at the game of ideas, and unfortunately, we're heading that direction. Um, that's the direction that, uh, unfortunately, I think we're on that permanent collision course. I think Trump, Trumpian politics are here to stay, even if Donald Trump, let's say Donald Trump, um, gets impeached or Donald Trump doesn't win re-election, and we get a Democrat in the office. Everything that the Democrats are doing, they're setting a template. The Republicans set a template with Bill Clinton, who, which, George w. Bush. which followed the Democrats to counter serve under Bush. 
Then the Republicans counterserved all that. And if now, it hadn't been for 9-11, it would have been so nasty and toxic. Like, that yeah. staved off a lot of this. Yeah, and uh, I, I hope, I think a lot of the statuses that I see, uh, along with so many cliches about guns, which we'll get into in all of this, are just that, this, well, I hope that this changes the other people. I hope that this changes the discourse of them, the politicians, or this makes the left get their act together, or this will make the uh, politicians realize that they're all violent extremists bringing violent force against us, which we do not disagree with. Government is force. Government is, is the force of a gun demanding that you do something and it's easier to accept because you're just you know giving it somebody else on your behalf but that doesn't mean that in a counter uh in a counter strike you can all of the sudden start shooting people on a baseball diamond so i over tax cuts right i mean it, it is it is uh it, it is not the radical left that created the 66 year old man to go out and shoot people it's mental illness and the fact that we are sitting here talking about guns, we're sitting here talking about the behavior of Donald Trump and congressional Republicans and congressional Democrats, or them, that's all bullshit. The fact is that this man will likely be ruled as somebody who is crazy if, if they were ever to get to the, the full bottom of the story. Every other mass shooter has just been nuts, and he is taking out his psychosis within the realm of politics as opposed to his school. You know, and uh, it, it is it is unfair to blame Bernie Sanders, and uh, I, I just I just it's don't... unfair to blame Republicans for not supporting tougher gun law. I mean, the guy's from Illinois. Absolutely, he bought the guns legally, completely, right. which is hard to do in Illinois. Right, right. they don't right. like in Chicago. You, <laughs> they don't give those theoretically. Away you there. can't get them right. unless you're a criminal. Right. Mm-hmm. So I, I just uh, I'm just sickened by so many of the cliches and everybody missing the point. Mm-hmm. And I think that this is a time when we all can sit and reflect and go, how are my words contributing to a toxic political environment? Um, y- you I don't know, know that I want to do that. I know. <laughs> I know. We're the mean boys of liberty. But at the same time, uh, I think one of the founding principles of We Are Libertarians is that we must recognize the humanity of every person that exists. And you cannot be a libertarian without valuing each individual human being. And if you as a libertarian are not doing that over politicians, then you are not being libertarian. Yeah, it's hypocritical. You have to understand that these are human beings with emotions and feelings. And when you can then try to empathize with them, well, they don't empathize with us. Well, have you? Where do you think that ends? uh, Hannah's a, a Christian that's married. You've read the have you heard of the love dare? Yeah, of course. <laughs> What's the love dare? The love dare is like it's this Kurt Cameron movie where basically he's in he's getting divorced and things are just <gasps> on the rocks. I know. Yeah. Kurt Cameron getting divorced. Too there's bad. there's it, a crisis. Yes. And he just cannot figure called, out. Uh, what's the actual movie called? Well, uh, can you Google it? It's it's a Kurt Cameron it's about, movie. He's in he's like a firefighter or something. Yeah. It's called um. Shoot, the love dare. Remember. The I mean, love this dare is, is the this book. is fascinating. The love dare is the book. It's a good. It's a good story. It's a campy little Christian it's movie. Like a Nicholas Sparks thing. Kind of. Kind of. But basically, he's fireproof. Si- fireproof. He's sitting there going, "I just don't understand why she won't change." And then eventually, all of his firefighting buddies just go, "Dude, you're the one with the problem." And I think that. And so he starts doing all these little things to try and change his behavior. And I found the love dare to be like it didn't save my marriage, but it did extend it about six months, because <laughs> our relationship did improve because I recognized that I was doing things that were harsh and hard-hearted. Mm-hmm. And I think that if we're ever going to get leadership in politics that recognizes humanity, then we must speak to them in a humane way. And we're not doing that. We're not allowing them either to to be real and authentic because then we'll vote their ass out. Well, I will personally say so. Somebody who used to be like a diehard Republican, raised super conservative, I have come a long way from that yeah. because You've come a, a long, long way. From 2012. way. I've come so far from that, and honestly, I've gotten out of politics because of the fighting. I my best friend is a Bernie Sanders loving 
bitch like that's just what she is and i love her for it like she's my best friend i can't help it but she's, she's really irritating on facebook you'd hate her my right? best friend is great she's great but she's she not that takes Jessica my side Ohio, against yours no no she takes my side against chris's no, that's why chris doesn't no, like her she's like oh my god feminist and bernie uh, oh that's amanda yeah. that's yeah. not oh. that's amanda she's hey, also a really good friend of mine no. Yeah. no it's fine i have two different are you friends. talking about megan she has two oh, friends megan. i have multiple friends i have multiple friends that are democrat and ranging in left whatever and we all respect each other we don't agree with each other's opinions but we don't talk about it because we know there's zero point in talking about it and we're good friends like we are literally my best friend when i vote or worked for mitt romney voted for barack obama like that's a stab in the heart but she's my best friend and so like was she's no <laughs> she's she voted still for barack obama <laughs> she still is Sorry. and she voted for bernie and then she voted for hillary Blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so the point is, like, I just got away from the, like, you have to separate yourself from that. And you have to really honestly realize that um, people are allowed to have different opinions. You're not always right. They're not always right. And that's part of it. And I will yell at anybody who um, called President Obama any other derogatory term. I get angry at people who call President Trump any sort of derogatory term. Like, it's not okay. They have I would a level contend of you office. Hated Trump. You d had like a natural aversion to Trump more so than you did even Obama. Yeah. But still, he's still the president. And if Hillary had won, she would still be President Clinton. Like, you have to respect their offices. You don't have to disagree or agree with them. And you don't have to keep it inside of you. But you have to be respectful. You have to admit that other people are allowed to have their own opinions. And you you just have to love, like you just don't need to hold hands and sing kumbaya. I don't know. I but guess I guess well, I don't necessarily toleration. Agree. I guess yeah. I don't necessarily agree that you have to respect the office, but mm. I do think that you you don't need to go out of your way to. I guess really what I'm trying to say is that you need to never lose sight on the fact that like these people bleed and yeah, that they're, they're human not beings. Making fun of Baron Trump makes you a shitty person. For right. Instance. Or holding up the head of Skulls Donald Trump. With, well, then Kathy Lee Griffin was like, right. oh, well, he wasn't against Don Baron. Well, he's a little kid. Of course, he's going to be bothered by the fact you're holding a head, his dad's head. Ooh. Well, and I think it's interesting that you brought up the point of tolerating others because you see, well, me personally, I mean, on a college campus, yeah. If you're, yeah. like I've said before, if you're a Republican, you're a Nazi, basically. Like, everybody is... They wish is, you had been shot yesterday. Right. Everybody's liberal. Everybody's a Democrat. But I still... Some of my best friends are Democrats or liberals, whatever. But um, it's just interesting because these people are some of my best friends. Yet, later that day on Facebook, and I'm sure you guys noticed, especially during the election, um, so many posts saying, this is it. If you support Trump, if you support so and so, unfriend me I right was, now. I, was, I, I unfriended some people. Click, <laughs> click right now because I yeah. just don't understand, and I never did. But part of I me totally is like, did. <laughs> I was asked to leave a wedding party right. like, you yeah. as a groomsman. No, swear to God, for well, real. Yeah. What? I still got invited, but I was not a groomsman any longer. What? Sort of guy. Did you go to the wedding? Yeah, of course. Oh. I don't well, care. And that's the thing. It's just. Oh, like, I would have trolled it. I would have. Oh, would've. I would have. Going on so a MAGA shirt. Greg's a good person. I no, it just doesn't matter that an much. Apology. But, but <laughs> does anyone have any? I'm <laughs> staging a cry in at your wedding. Piece, apologize. <laughs> <laughs> but that's just the thing. It's like they preach love and acceptance mm. and all of this stuff for all people of different races and um, backgrounds and sexual orientations. Yet, if you have a different political view than them. If you're, it's if you're sent if you're center right even if you're center right of them if you're uh if you're uh, like howard dean now he was such a ah! oh my god <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like howard dean if you listen to the latest ezra klein podcast with uh whoever the lady that was that helped run the tech on his campaign if you listen to that podcast about the howard dean campaign and you realize how far left the modern democratic and the liber and the progressives have gone now to the point that the Antifa, Antifa people are just like, are the, they're Leninist revolutionaries trying yeah. to, I mean, we're back to the weather underground days. Exactly. Um, and, the militant Soviet left. And, and it's, if so if you're just a traditional Indiana Democrat, you're... you're John Gregg would have no much. home in the uh, Democratic yeah. Party anymore. Well, and that's what I think is interesting is to combat what I just said is these people say, well, of course 
we don't agree with you. It's not about it's not about political parties. It's about you supporting a openly bigoted, racist, homophobic, horrible person. Like if somebody was a Nazi, we wouldn't respect them. So that's basically you're as bad as them. Right. Yeah, you are a Nazi because Trump's a Nazi because. I just be like, have you met Hillary Clinton? But the point, right. the point. She like, eats children. She drinks their like blood. She's actually a horrible person. But she has guru disease. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She's creepy. The, the the reality is is that we used to have labels for people's ideologies, ideas, I- ideas, ideal ideologies. It was disagreements like people, people, of but, but political people, philosophy. People used mm-hmm. to think is my point. Yep. And, and so now you you can't label emotions. Like you can label emotions like angry and sad, but when they start when you start spiraling into well he is all these adjectives and you just can't even challenge it. It's, it's just it's a bizarre state of the world and it's led us to a darker place, and I just don't know how, how we we again we can't fix other people. All we can do is just focus on our behavior uh, and, and trying to find out rational, reasonable sources like this, where we're trying to create a home for people who don't fit into all these crazy. You know, like we're just not we're not extremists no you know, i mean we're we're, just, we're very much prag, pragmatic pragmatic but above all else we're moderate we have our views but we're not going to say we need to do this today mm-hmm. you know i'm a libertarian but i'm not saying we need private police in southport indiana right now mm-hmm. you know what i mean like that's not what we're not even remotely ready for that it'd be counterproductive and so it's it's sad i mean i don't know what you do donald trump's mm-hmm. kind of the perfect culmination of all of this because he's an abstraction do you, any of you think of Donald Trump as a, as a person? Uh, I don't. I've lost track of him. Yeah. Like, no, he, I for, I, but I mean, I never remember him being a person first. Because well, like, it was Trump, the brand, the bigger than life. Well, and that's, it's always been a buffoonish, you know, like abstraction or, you know, thought. Right. And well, and that's interesting. It's I've never thought of him. And it's not like in a derogatory sense. It's true. Like he's the brand. Except for was it Ivanka who just posted that picture um, of like it was like a cartoon of like God hugging. Mm-hmm. Donald Trump and yeah. said like please pray for my father yep. right. that kind of I was like he's real even well yeah. right and even me I'm not like a huge Trump hater I mean I don't like the guy but I'm not one of those people out on the front lines and even me that was like wow like you take a step back so I'm like can't imagine if that did anything for the actual psychos but uh probably not but. no I mean that's the thing is the lines are drawn and then a lot of it too is like this guy I, I think he was rational because he talked to the mayor, the former Democratic mayor of uh, Alexandria, lost this last November, but he went to the same YMCA that this guy was out in the mm-hmm. lobby using his laptop all day on forums and on the internet, on the websites. And so he was completely rational. He was talking to him. He goes, hey, you know, I'm from Illinois. I'm here for a trip, and then I'm looking for work. He's a former um, home inspector. That's what his job was. Right. And so uh, his business shut down. He left his wife back in Belleville, Illinois. And so he was asking him for work. They asked he asked him for um, restaurant recommendations. He was asking him for all different kinds of things. Um, and I- every time politics was brought up, they'd say something negative about Trump, or you know, it'd be a, a conversation with the group. He would he would keep it to himself, or be like, "Yeah, I agree with you guys," and was very very like that's what sc- was scary to me how he behaved, and the fact that he shuts down his business, almost self radicalizes. With right. progr- like progressivism by be- and in his entire existence had become the internet. Right. How like he was sitting in the lobby on? two uh-huh. months. He left Illinois. I think it was a chem- I'll bet you it was a chemical imbalance. Like something snapped in his head. I I'll mean, bet you. So you're saying he uh his entire existence became the internet. He's been all his well, he <laughs> became an obsession because he, <laughs> he volunteered. Became, I'm running away, I'm hiding <laughs> yeah. right now. <laughs> Basically he was a leftist shitlord. <laughs> and, uh, and then Did James Neese threatened to sew him out of a helicopter and then here we are. <laughs> No, yeah, did he have, <laughs> fuck you, cat. <laughs> What'd you say? Why don't you he check said, did he have your a podcast? mirror again? <laughs> Shut up. Uh, but yeah, I mean, he he really went down the well because he hadn't he hasn't uh, he's talked to his wife, but he just went on. The neighbor came and asked, you know, is he okay? And right. asked the wife, and she did an uh, interview with ABC yesterday. And he, oh yeah, he just went on a trip for a couple months and lived out of a white van. I used the what? YMCA to shower and work out, and then used their is, internet yeah. all day sitting in their. Uh, but that's the thing is the mayor was like, this was a stable guy. Like, no, like, irrational anger. Yeah, that happens. Like, that's yeah. part of mental. I mean, anything. Yeah, you can you be get calm. sick and you just, like, you're fine one day and you're literally I just wonder if he didn't next. spin himself into a frenzy reading only, like, reaffirming things. Hey, Honestly, I, I wish we could delete Facebook for, and Twitter and all of social media from everything. I, I, I I'm, like not, I'm not so going to lie. As much as I love social media because it, it, it gives me a career and it's given us a platform, mm-hmm. uh, I'll tell you, the 
Uh, did anybody? Did any of you see the piece on sixty Minutes this past week mm-hmm. on Aaron Andrews on, and then uh, n- on your phones? The mm. the uh, and we'll ha- we'll have to put these in the show notes on WeAreLibertarians.com. But this piece uh, on on the cell phones that the Google ethicist basically oh, you're telling me about that he is now speaking out saying yeah. your phones are incredibly addictive. It oh, is, more so than any drug you could take. It is changing your brains. Like we yeah. we did an episode somewhere in the one hundreds that I saw where we talked about books where. Long form reading's gone. There's no attention span time for it. Right. Uh, I used to love to read, and I struggle with reading now. Yeah. I swear to God, it's terrible. Like there are days I wish I could just go back to it. Like I'm really tempted to go back to a flip phone. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, because the the uh, dopamine hit. Oh, it's enormous. Of these devices and of Facebook, that he, he they basically were saying that. Uh, this one guy who runs a neuro marketing f- f- digital yeah. firm in they LA. They basically just exploit and try to rewire your brain. Yeah, they hold like <clears throat> Instagram, for instance. Instagram holds likes mm-hmm. and then releases the likes like, based on an algorithm perfectly mm-hmm. designed to get you to come back. Cat, yeah. what were you doing? Literally, Instagram? well, actually, I was, but I was just checking. My mom just sent a text. Funny, uh, shooting on I four sixty five, which is the interstate in Indiana. Uh, somebody was shooting at a truck with a Make America Great Again flag and sticker. Really? Is, is that confirmed or is that from Conservative Treehouse? Well, that's why I was on Facebook. <laughs> I was on Facebook trying to see if it was real or not. Did Washington Post well, do fake news again? Isn't that interesting that she just went to Facebook to fact check that and not yeah. Google? Well, that's yeah. the thing. Oh, yeah. It's Facebook is for people 45 to 25, 64 or 6% of our information originates from there yeah which is terrible because facebook is full of fake news and everybody yeah. knows it. exactly and that's like what the friends especially we are libertarians yeah. right <laughs> and the reason i check it it's it's faster like do you know how it's annoying when there's like uh okay when i was in high school there was a shooting um at a <laughs> i shouldn't laugh <laughs> yeah did you, did, did you date him I've yeah it was my boyfriend no uh was yeah. weird somebody shot a, you know. up uh the supermarket that's like five minutes from my house and we were just refreshing the yeah, laugh the, the, the live feed. Goddamn cantaloupes! <laughs> <laughs> hey, two people died. No, but we oh, were like, real? yeah, oh, no, it was messed up. But kind of bad now. we were somebody's mom. No, but we were like refreshing <laughs> the news app over and over. Dead moms are not funny. It yeah. takes forever for the news to actually update. They, they weren't updating. Yeah, they have to check facts. Yeah, they're, they're hamstrung because they have to get two sources before they can publish. Yeah. And whereas right. at other places can go on like an un- just... anonymous source if you're Washington Post. Exactly. Yeah. Or New York Times. <laughs> but that's what I mean. That's what they did today. Yeah. So I, it, it, it is. It's just it's it's uh, maddening. And and I'm not by any means uh, one of these people who thinks that the internet or anywhere should be censored. But after watching that 60 minutes piece on the cell phones, you know where like Instagram just basically holds back likes and then dumps them, so you get notifications at a time specifically tailored to you. Mm-hmm. That they know you may have a break in your day because we are we are rhythmic creatures, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and so then it just it lures you into your phone. And now we're at a point where it, two out of every minutes, uh, two out of every five minutes for most people are spent on Facebook. Oh yeah, which is an incredible statistic. Yeah, I mean it is the operating system of the new world. Like yeah. it is Microsoft Windows just in yeah. a different form. Two of the best decisions I ever made. The first one was turning off push notifications for Facebook. Yes. Yep, yes. I did that. All one, notifications for all The second one was deleting my Facebook app. And now, in order to check Facebook, I have to either be on my computer or actually log on to the Facebook site on my phone, which yeah. is a sent pain. from browser. Yeah. Yeah. No, for, but for real, like yeah. that. Those two items like changed my life, and uh, except for my mom and a few people that would kill so me if Mary I deleted Todd Facebook, would be I would best probably decision. delete Facebook. So. My thing yeah. is, is where does it, where does it end? Is this going to turn into like, for example, a super, you know, hipster and trendy thing to do is to, oh yeah, we ride our bikes everywhere and oh, of driving. It already is. So do you think the new trendy thing is because, um, I've heard a few like celebrities talk about it. You think the new trendy thing is, yeah, I got rid of my smartphone. I just have a flip phone. You I think, think we're going, we're going to go oh, backwards. Absolutely. I, think absolutely. Sh- I think so. Because Ed Sheeran just, uh, he was took a year off to do music he was like yeah i don't have a phone anymore i just have an Andrew ipad Luck has a flip phone yeah i genuinely believe and i think i've said it on the show before that i think by the end of this year you will see a um, uh, movement starting to appear of people who are taking a stand against using social media and spending all their time on their phone I, because i just think that yeah. we're starting to recognize that after after nine ten years of having all these things it's great but it it is hurting us in a way that is 
so many that ways. is that is not good but at the same the question time, is, is it hurting us or is it just changing us it's changing us well, but at the same time i think the uh i i can tell you i am not as smart as i was mm-hmm. before 2010 when i got a, an i haven't iPhone. had a good night's sleep since <laughs> i was 16 and i got my iphone you're yeah. kidding well because i check it I'm on it constantly. I sleep. And then- I sleep. Te- I sleep. Texted her sister this morning. <laughs> I sleep. Texted Chloe. Something I- that was very interesting is last week. I think I was with Chloe. I, we were doing mock panel judges for Miss Indiana contestants. So we were like doing their interview, like mock interviews, and the girls had to come up with a platform. And then another question on their like resume is, if you had another platform, what would it be? All of the girls, ages I don't know, Miss Indiana contestants are what eighteen to twenty two ish, twenty three ish. All of them, their second platform would be social media and Absolutely. how it is bad and affecting their generation. Well, really? and yeah, I, all of them. I, I think I, I, I have noticed in the in having interns and being around a lot of interns, the the younger millennials, people like our friend Jeff Ibert, for instance, um, or, or Kat, they're very protective about what information is actually put out about them. Whereas the older millennials like myself just don't really care because it was so new yep. and we were old enough to make the decision as to what we would put out there or not. Whereas Kat had Snapchat in high school. Like God. we didn't we didn't have cell phones in high cool. school. Well, you know? No, I got my first cell phone when I got my driver's license. Right. Well, and that was and a the, flip phone. And the interesting thing is, is that we a part of our school curriculum was based on social media and how like which parts? social media bullying i guess oh cyber like, bullying yeah cyber cyber bullying greg's an expert greg's an expert i didn't right. invent it but i made it an art form but <laughs> it's it's so funny because in elementary school that what the heck was that but it wasn't until middle and high school is when it was really cyber bull- really pushing on cyber bullying less on physical bullying that's why oh, when, psychological bullying is way worse right mm-hmm. and that's why like when these shows come out like netflix's 13 reasons why and you see these kids or you watch old movies or tv shows from you know early 2000s late 90s and you see these kids oh. getting mm-hmm. um older you see these kids getting Fucking ages you know like beaten up at, and their lunch money stolen and and it's just so unrealistic but the people in charge of these tv shows and movies because that's how it was that's then. how bullying was then they think that's how it is and so no. it's really not registering for kids because it's now it's, it's not all online it's yeah. all online so the the um the 60 minutes piece talked about it was by anderson cooper and anderson uh, had all these. Uh, you've eaten half a loaf of blueberry bread, Hannah. I stop this it. This is my second slice, and the butter is soft now. <laughs> <laughs> I might be also on fire. <laughs> <laughs> it's been singed around the edges. It's I fine. love. Burnt we have, is a, okay. we have a chair just off camera, and Mittens is just judging, judging the shit out of <laughs> Hannah. It's the literal feline bullying. Lack of shits that I give about. How, oh my Don't. god, he's so <laughs> judging yeah. me. Look at, look at, <laughs> Uh, so awesome. Just assume the cat's gender. I'll post hey, a photo of it on don't the Instagram. Don't check your don't check your Facebook because they are just cyberbullying the shit out of you right now. Out of who me? No, the cat. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, cat I, space. I basically have. Uh, I will take a photo and put that up on our Instagram. But that was so bad. That was terrifying, guys. I think he's gonna come kill me in my sleep. Um, well, if you keep misassuming her gender, she's going to. <laughs> So uh, in this piece, Anderson Cooper had his phone just out of reach, and they hooked him up to all these monitors, and they started uh, texting him. And every time that he had uh, he had a text message and he couldn't read it, he had all these like physiological uh, reactions. Neuroses, yeah. And they've huh. they've determined that that moment causes cortisol. That if your phone is out of reach and you hear a ding cortisol shoots so your phone is f- making you fat cortisol is the hormone i'm that, throwing my phone away right now right like so give me some more blueberry <laughs> bread with butter that's <laughs> yeah, not the phone honey. yeah <laughs> <laughs> podcast audio bullying <laughs> my god bitch yeah. <laughs> might be that bread and that, extra, <laughs> and that extra helping of butter you just spread all over there sorry you can't sit at this table anymore that, you're not a plastic that's oh. uh that's good irish irish uh cream butter so it looks delicious yeah it's i'm about good. to have a little bit like that. uh so it's a little hard still but it works. you you have uh, but cortisol <laughs> is the stress hormone and it 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 is basically the the biological reason that you have cortisol is that it says, hey, we're in danger, we're in danger of dying, store this fat, store this energy. So your phone is making you fat. That is a lot of So that's released cat. from yeah. the anxiety Can from I not being able to check? You're, All right, yep. this is my phone. Trash. Yeah, it's sure gone. <laughs> that's so, an Opal, nobody's impressed. Yeah, it's a Samsung. It's an Obama phone. No, it's actually um, 
a piece of a shit. A Motorola, <laughs> and it's really a piece of shit. I'm getting a new phone. Oh, I'm getting a new phone either this month or next. Nice. So we'll see what I get. Get a flip phone. I might. Do I it. mean, and here's the thing. So and correct cool. me if I'm wrong. Okay, so middle school, because I got my first smart. I got the iPhone 4 in white. Uh, in of course tw- you did. Right, of course. Uh, 20, 2012, I think, yeah. So I was a sophomore in high school, 16th birthday. And um, I know, I was no. little. Oh, man. And then, so four years ago, three, four years ago, it was horrible the amount of texting texting during uh mm-hmm. texting during class well texting they eventually during installed the those player. machines to knock out wireless service but right people just logged on the internet texting during this texting during that i mean people were glued to their phones mm-hmm. and i think now a few, three four years later i think people are glued to their phones but i think not necessarily i feel like a courtesy was kind of learned i don't know correct me if i'm wrong because i feel like people my age especially i don't look in class and you know people aren't texting non-stop. glued to their phone all the time but yeah i think our age is so like i don't mine is definitely is so. it mm-hmm. well i know for like for our generation and then like so i'm uh god i'm gonna be 32 but um for my, like us there's actually it's a phenomenon called flubbing so like when you're out at like dinner with friends and all you're doing is looking at your phone it's mm-hmm. or yeah flubbing so it's phone ignoring hmm. yeah that's the thing. that's the like phrase for it see and i don't know because you're sitting there looking at your phone while you're doing a podcast right. and not paying attention i'm listening <laughs> it's flubbing uh-huh. well and it's i don't you go clubbing <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> flubber right right jiggle to the left <laughs> um and i don't know if it's just my j- i kind of caught the the, the mm-hmm. end of learning about cyber b- like because i feel like older people it was all just wow check out these cool new products but my generation really caught the first wave of hey th- we're starting to recognize problems so we learned You're not so addictive because also you guys it's interesting you don't have like user patterns that mirror ours like we were obsessed with facebook's so we came from myspace uh-huh. transitioned right. over then it was twitter is cool but then we got bored with it you guys are distributed across a bunch of different yeah. ones like visco yeah um then tumblr so for you and your What's taylor swift visco? blog right uh, it's, it's a, a instagram competitor like even it's like a photography app yeah wow I'm old. i think it's i don't know i think it's interesting i just think my age group we caught the first wave of learning about courtesy with phones with smartphones with that kind of stuff so was that like, learned or was it like or was that like reactive that you just observed and noticed or was it like proactive drilled into you you know we i remember a few like my public speaking classes we would learn about like uh like business classes job interview classes um whenever like job people job fair people would come professional development yeah yeah I don't know the word obviously but um <laughs> not professional but yeah so i don't know and i can only imagine it must be worse for younger kids. I know, like, I think element or middle and high school kids now that I know still, all they do, it's less thought driven and more image driven. Yeah. So all they are on is Snapchat and mm-hmm. Instagram. Whereas my age group, Hannah's age group, it's all about here's Twitter, my open diary, here's mm-hmm. Facebook. The, the Let me I- tell you what I'm eating right now. The, exactly. The idea of Bitter. sitting down and reading a book. Ooh, I bet you taste nasty. Not that I would know. The <laughs> idea of sitting down and reading a book for generations after ours is gone the uh, yeah. the, the we are now going to return to storytelling in the in and verbal verbal storytelling in the in the way that homer shared information mm. you had these stories being told and passed down through generations as a way of remembering because they didn't have writing and uh i think that's really where we're headed we're heading towards digital memory and we uh, still communicate photos. even more efficiently because like we use vi- like vi- photos and audio right and so it's i mean you can make the argument that it's way more efficient because you're actually sending and transmitting more information much quicker but but and and so i want to tie this all back to the shooting because i feel occasionally a little like there's a psychosis around my use of my phone like do you ever just get like you just there's like this just this weird feeling that i have sometimes when I'm, i don't have my phone or i'm not near my phone or like i just like i don't know i just get oh i, I get crazy (laughs) you know or i just am like anxiety yeah and i and i wonder in the older generations such as the baby boomer generation like uh the the shooter was of the baby boomer generation they've really taken facebook by storm and turned it into a real (laughs) shithole like my grandma's hilarious you yeah yeah, (laughs) like (laughs) uh, so i think we're much more thoughtful about a lot of the i don't see a lot of younger people going hard on the facebook it's the older generations who are like just I don't know if they just get old and go and go senile and just start saying the craziest shit online but I think it's uh, like 
it's the it's your older aunt Donna who's posting shit where you're just like, oh my gosh, what? I troll the crap out of some of those old people. And I don't, I don't, I don't know what so that is. easy. I don't know what that is, but I'm wondering if just social media has just kind of elevated that disconnection that well, sometimes I even I, feel. But think about it, like those older people, they, and I, I say this with all love in my heart because. I have some grandparents who are this way, but like they were the racists. They were, they were, but they, they were. were, they were the racists. They were um, like, they were the anti, like the seventies, the love, whatever. anti disestablishment like, yeah, 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 pretty much. And so they've all felt this way for a very long time. And now they have a platform to like actually blast their beliefs, beliefs. And they don't understand that when they were doing that, when they were younger, they were with people that agreed with them. But now it's on a social media. Like they don't understand the concept of social media. They yeah. just think that they can get on there and blast all their stuff in all caps and everybody's going to agree with them. They don't understand. All caps. Those they do. God, yeah. No, the Why are you screaming? Are. Like, I'm friends with a lady named Pearl Sparkman. This lady, crazy, she posts some of the craziest yeah. Yeah. All cap stuff well, I've and ever you seen. have to they, think they, don't, they just don't grasp like that concept. And, and so, in the same way that Cat only sees cat aged people, this guy is seeing baby boomer nut jobs there, and they have the same level of argument, only probably mm -hmm. a little more vicious that we do on ours. Well, and yep. here's the thing: two points. One, I think also it's because Facebook is such a user friendly um, right. platform. It would have never won out if it wasn't. And here's the and exactly and here's God the bless thing Mark Zuckerberg. that age group, they're I mean they're not as techno right like, they're not good with technology so they're not going to be able to learn two three four new platforms. Facebook's easy and it's available. It's like a phone company. And it's everything they need. It's Facebook. If you think about it, it com like Instagram, Twitter, it stole from Send Facebook. Money. Right. Money. Instagram everything. Instagram is owned by Facebook. Yep, like they, they stole from it and they bought it. So it's. Why learn all these separate platforms when they can just use one big one? It's easy. Well, it's, you know, it's economies of scale. Like you know, it makes exactly. any, any network is direct. Like uh, any network, every time someone joins it, it, it actually doubles in value. Like right. More so. Uh, what is that law? That's like a K factor or whatever. Yeah. But it's so any any network's that way, and that's why they inevitably take over and win. Viral growth. Well, and the other yeah, and the other thing is that if I didn't know better, okay, so I know you. It's funny, but uh, Tumblr, for example, mm -hmm. very young kids use it. Mm -hmm. Very liberal. It's it's yeah. the most liberal website. Oh yeah, and I. That's why I mock it and make fun of it because it's a it's snowflake hilarious. convention. Well, and here's the thing: if I didn't know better, I'm scrolling through Tumblr. Um, let's say I had no knowledge of politics. Doesn't matter how old I am, I would completely be consumed. Like right. these kids are so crazy, so hateful they're the ones that's the platform i was talking about the kids who say they're the ones that like twist professors necks and oh yeah even though they're liberal the professor's liberal they're just willing to allow diversity exactly of opinion. they're the ones who are saying wow we need to enslave white people like the craziest stuff <laughs> that we make fun we'll of social justice i dare you well and the craziest <laughs> the craziest stuff that we make fun of comes a lot of times from those young kids on tumblr and like i said if i didn't know any better and i was just scrolling through tumblr i mean some of the stuff the rhetoric they use I would believe it. Oh, it's dystopian. Like, I mean, it's so far removed from actual reality, but in that cocoon and that incubator, it just it, it's like it's almost a constant battle to see who can have the most shock value. Exactly. And here's the thing: they have little nuggets of truth in there. They have little fact checks in right. there. Like they're very good at what they do. I mean, they're just they're a good at crafting group. a narrative and only using things that support their exactly. positions. So it's just that's what scares me: is these younger and younger kids are using platforms, whereas Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, if you say that kind of stuff, you'll get called out. But Tumblr, no other older, because it's Tumblr's a very hard um, interface to use it's very, compared to well, Facebook, Twitter. Well, I mean, it's Twitter. not a natural, like, it's a it's a it's like a picture blogging platform, and you're not used to, like, interacting with others on it. It's it, just purely, pr like, promotion. Exactly. Like, like a food diary. Right. And I'm 20. Like a keto Chris. diary. Or keto oh, diary. Good right. God. And I'm 20, and I'm, really yeah. like, I know a lot about social media, but you're for hair 20. Flip. <laughs> but um, <laughs> Tumblr is just, I've been on it for like a year and a half and I still am like, I don't know about this. So it's just these younger and younger kids who are getting incorporated into it are having these ideas. And I'm like, this is the root of the problem. Like it's Tumblr. Like this is where these people are coming from. And I think it's they're starting to bleed over to the bigger platforms. They can. I mean, everything's going to go that way, though, because everything's driven. It's like the Instagram algorithm. So like yeah. that was what I was kind of writing about in that article is that the better Facebook gets at giving you what you're already wanting, the more your time you're going to spend on it. Yeah. So 
it, it has a specific like disincentive to never give you anything new that you may not click on or expose you to anything you dislike that you've already showed a preference for. So it just gradually keeps feeding you, it creates an echo chamber. It create it just, and then it amplifies because the more time you spend on something, you can't help but become consumed by it. And you kind of go from like, like this guy went from a passionate Bernie supporter. Mm -hmm. He wanted to stand up to corporate greed and corruption, which is fair. Yep. And absolutely. It's completely fair because that is the whole, like a lot of libertarianism. The whole point is that government always ends up being corrupt. Right. You know, it's not that the government is an evil entity. It's that, people end up exploiting it to force it on others and then take advantage of it by using it to buy influence. Mm -hmm. And so this guy wasn't a, a weird guy. Like he was a Bernie volunteer, passed out flyers. They interviewed people that he supported or uh, worked with. Yes, he was passionate, but no, he wasn't a radical. This is all the way up until like last week when the mayor talked to him in the lobby of the YMCA, the former mayor. And so then though, where does it cross over when your world becomes so narrow and so intense that you start, you just lose grasp on reality. Yeah. There's just like a, it's like he just, some step. He snapped. Yeah, it was he, a slow I boil, but then something happened where, but he was calm. And so he, right. he watched behavior to see when was a good opportunity to, you know, that, that he could exploit and go after them. And he went and legally purchased two guns, purchased a nine millimeter and then a 762 caliber rifle. In Virginia? No, in Illinois, legally. Wow. Yeah, completely yeah, legally. Yeah, that's the thing. Because he'd been charged for battery, but it was dismissed. And it was a dispute, a domestic style dispute with, okay. with his daughter and her boyfriend. Um, he probably didn't like the boyfriend. Yeah. Probably he was probably a libertarian. <laughs> <laughs> he was probably a condescending libertarian talking right. about, if you would just read Rothbard. Your cat is freaking me out. You, well, your cat, my cat knows people. She just does, she knows <laughs> people good really judge well. of character. She's staring yeah. at you right now. He, she, it, whatever it is. And now it's judging Spangle for associating with you. Yep. Like, it's like legit. <laughs> She's just cutely sitting on a chair. It's so adorable. No, cats are terrible. Creatures. Check it out on uh, We Are Libertarians uh, Instagram. If if she could, she would have a fake doll of your head hanging from her right <laughs> paw. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I got to tell you, cats are the ultimate predators. Oh them. yeah. Uh, so so yeah, I I, I think that uh, the premise of your article that you wrote and and get into it a little more deeply, that that we're building these silos and we don't even mean to right. because these things we use to communicate and where we're getting our news from are specifically designed to keep us coming back to give us anxiety when we don't check them right to remap our neural networks so that we only can take short bursts 140 characters bullet notes like most people i i, I used to love well one most books are bad right now that's the other thing is if you go to the book section and go to pol the political or current affairs it's Bill O'Reilly porn. Like, it's no it great is. thinker. It's, you know, people who have a group of fans, and so they give them a book. Like, like Milo. Melissa yeah, exactly. Donnie. Except she's self-published. Awkward. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, But then, like, Milo Yiannopoulos. She's a fan of herself. Right. Like, oh, Milo. Well, but, I mean, he's no great thinker, but no. he was given a $250,000 book yeah. deal because he had a group of people that would buy it, not because well, he was good at his craft. It's the, it's the, everything is that way. I mean, that's why Chicks on the Right have a freaking radio Rob show. Kendall's their producer. I know he is. Oh, um, God. So how do, is there anything we can do? Is this just the new world? I think it's twofold. I mean, I do think events like this end up being inflection points where there's, people want a softening tone. Right. You know, I think that it was something we talked about right after the election because a lot of people thought I was just like so pro-Trump and I, it wasn't that I was pro-Trump, is that I, this movement has been brewing for a while. Absolutely. And it's still brewing. But every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So the people that are most easy, or the, the type of messaging that would defeat a Trump and sort of moderate and tone down society would be the more rational, the calm-minded, more state, like a statesman. Right. People, you know, preaching love and toleration. But nobody because wants... Because people will want that in time. But they don't want Dick Luger. No, no, it has to be the right, <laughs> obviously everything has to be the right messenger. Right. You know, it has Richard to be, Murdoch. right, exactly. Yeah. And I mean, it can't be, there can't be the disconnect between the messenger and the message. Right. You know, mm -hmm. like it, it, w it wouldn't work if you threw Oprah out. It just seemed cheap and that you want, oh, anybody celebrity can be president. Or right. Whatever. But it'll be someone that shocks you and you don't necessarily see coming. Sure. Like Barack Obama. Exactly. High minded, yeah. you know, above the fray and just takes like, it was a storm because it was all authentic. Yep. Yeah. Well, they've said Mark Zuckerberg. He's laying the groundwork. He is. Uh, mm. Hell, it'll never happen. Like he's, he's too autistic. Exactly. Like he's, he's literally. I mean, and I don't mean that derogatory. I mean, you no. watch a video of him, and yeah. he, is he paints very by awkward. numbers. Yeah. yeah, like he's yeah. incredibly brilliant, but at his craft, right? I, and you have to have a level of 
connection with the people. A Bill Clinton that was a little bit like... Um, like killer? <laughs> like I feel your pain, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Someone that right. is more of an advocate, but then still not like sappy, you know, like uh, falling down bleeding heart liberal. Right. So you think, okay, so because Trump, technically a lot of people consider him a media person mm-hmm. because Only. he had his own tv show and whatnot he his, his whole first. like book and career has been how to manipulate book, the media career, all that kind of stuff and so he broke through now do you think we're gonna see um rock stars or no i think kanye you're see, wants to run kanye, you know i think I mean? you're gonna see people in our primaries i don't think anyone will ever be able to do what he did no he took advantage of the right place at the right time he was cr- like it was yeah. crazy yeah. Yeah. he had to t- he, he he didn't win with the usual electorate like he mm-hmm. brought out new voters for the first i mean 30 percent of his voters in the primaries were first-time republican registering individuals and 22 of those were first-time voters right that that can't be done like and that's only because they were so attached personally to trump which is why they don't give a shit about him being a hypocrite they're trump fans first and they trust him and if that's what he decides that's what they believe and the party's second they don't care about the party the party didn't even want him exactly there's a huge part of me that really wants to believe in the good of people and believe that people like Kanye West will not actually be considered as viable uh, options. But you know, people say that exact same thing about Donald Trump. I, I know. Said it, I said it on this podcast I every know. episode. Yeah. So that's just oh, that's so terrifying. what makes me like interested, I guess, is how far is this going to go? Like, wh- is Donald Trump the breakthrough or was this just a fluke? He's the inflection point. So then it'll tip back in the opposite direction because people don't want this. What we have now is mm-hmm. such a rabid, angry, toxic environment it doesn't even it's to the point where anything the own government bureaucracy has turned on the president of the united states mm-hmm. right that's treason you know the deep state has mm-hmm. been the sort the, the F, former fbi director was the leak mm-hmm. yeah i mean that's stunning yeah the sitting uh, yeah i mean he that's what happened to nixon that's what drove him crazy it right. wasn't nixon wasn't paranoid until he couldn't keep a conversation quiet Exactly. But after and then he kept trying to find it and then broke the law because it drove him insane. I sometimes get very paranoid that we are in a in an irrevocable state because even though after Nixon came Reagan, came Clinton, you had these reformers who brought back people's respect and and trust in the government somewhat and then, you know, obviously Clinton and Reagan both in their presidency did things that eroded that. But during their campaign and their election, they they brought people back. It's still politics. Of and, course. And governing is still compromise, and that'll kill yeah. you every time. But I do worry that we're at a point now where there is some irrevocability because it is, it's just impossible in the internet age, once something happens, politics, uh, sort of here's the, the best way that I think most people can relate to it. You're you're 16 and you have a girlfriend or a, a boyfriend, and you two you two go all the way when you're 16 or Whoa. 17. You're never what are you going, referring to? You're never going back to hand jobs, you know. And and I feel like Donald Trump is is going all the way in the attack politics world, and that we're never going to be able to rein in the fringe elements of every political movement because say what you want it doesn't matter that this guy was a bernie supporter it it is it, it, he is somebody who is obviously psychologically disturbed if you want to kill people there's something wrong with you mm-hmm. and every movement for just a difference of opinion uh, uh, that's the thing exactly it's not right. because of any other reason that they hold an opposing view that's you. that's where he's different in a lot of these mass shooters that's the break th- the break is well, that he's now taking his psychosis into politics and that has has not been done no. you know where you know not the guy who long time. Yeah, the guy who shot gabby giffords was just literally crazy yeah this, this guy wasn't this, this was a guy functioning had a member of society that dissolved his inspection company legally he went to the government well, filed he had the an fee. agenda and here's the thing though is where does that stop because there are a lot of people especially my age who think that that was patriotism and that was okay absolutely right he, he did he thought he, he was thought. paul revere and exactly so that's like where does it stop like you see like the american government like world war ii they were killing people but they were killing nazis they're killing the bad guys the bad guys right so these people are convinced that republicans in the right and anybody who doesn't who don't agree with them are the bad guys yeah so i think well they've been taught that their whole life though so it's like where does it is that just going to be the new norm usually like humans typically there's a point like there's always some event that like resets you back to reality like holy crap 9/11. i am yeah like 9 11 or there's a uniting event and i think this will be like a political rhetoric uniting event I, I feel like that uh watching 
all of these these congressmen and everyone yesterday, it seemed to shake them to their core. It did. I and can imagine. It should. Yeah. That's and there terrifying. was there was just a, a guy got shot in the hip and has had three surgeries and is in critical condition in because of, he believes tax cuts are better than free like college. Like he literally walked up and said, "Are you all Republicans?" Mm-hmm. And they said yes, and he started Boom. opening fire. Like right. I mean, that's that's like Columbine. Like they walked in, they said, "Are you Christians?" Yes. All right, you're dead. Like that's the same thing. Just uh, right politics. It's the like, Crusades. Yeah, you it's know? terrible. But, but I'm Barbarism. worried. Barbarism. I'm worried that we can never, with the in the internet age, reign in the extremes of every movement. We will have to have it. Like you know, the internet's become so prevalent because one, it's so easy to be to identify with. Pe- a lot of people are lonely, right? Yeah. And yeah. so, like, a lot of people are looking for social acceptance, and right. for most people, the d- digital is the community. So it's where they go to say what a bad day they're having and then their friends surround them and give them things of support hey that's yeah that's a really good point yeah i mean it is the like social capital declined like and that's why there's no civic engagement in bowling leagues and uh shriners and elks club like people don't do these things but online they do Mm -hmm. the only difference is when you're forced to join an organization um it's the same thing in news there, the mass customization is what allows you to be radicalized because when you join the Republican Party, there's so many different blends of Republicanism. You moderate by being exposed to it, but right. you want the group identity. Same thing with the Democrats. Like the Democrats have Jim Webb, who is probably to the right of Donald Trump. Right. And then they would have someone like a Maxine Waters, who is a for, you know former violent a revolutionary Marxist. Right. And being in a big group like that forces conformity and moderation on you in a way that digital experience doesn't because you can you can uh, micro target and just build find people and discover people easier who reaffirm the most radical parts of your views and you're never forced to sort of i guess never forced to force toleration if you will we we have it in the libertarian movement i mean there yeah. and i wouldn't say anarcho capitalist but definitely there is a vein of the black and yellows that the that, revolutionary that, libertarians, right? That feel that that this was an acceptable act. That right. it's justified yeah. because they're you know, you know they're you, gangsters and yeah. they're killing people every killing day. Someone with is cutting off okay. health care, and that is true though for Congress too, because Congress goes and authorizes drone strikes and uh, authorizes funding for these things because it's easy to think that isn't a kid that died. It's the people that if that kid had grown up, it's an abstraction. You know, they're not thinking exactly. about a, putting a human face on it, right? Which is with a killer. I mean, that's and that's what, but that's what the internet does. It puts a layer between human interaction that makes harshness easier. So it was Flag Day yesterday when this t- when this took place, and I didn't I, even know that was it really. It was Flag Day. <laughs> that's boss, usually a huge libertarian day. My right. boss asked us on a conference call what we were doing for Flag Day. <laughs> I was like, um, have you watched my the flag? news? Uh, burning one. Uh, <laughs> Hey, why no. not? Yeah. Um, it's it's a it's a piece of cloth, but I, so I was convinced that this was this had to be one of ours. <laughs> you know, you were you I and was. Jeremiah was too, and I thought I was eh, like, not so fast, my friend. This is the but it didn't it didn't really add up that this was a right wing wacko in that attacking it, the moderates, re- Republicans. No. You rhinos have driven me over the edge, right? But to, to somebody who is a an anarchist, they don't they don't care that they're, they're violating the, they're using violence to. I mean, but. It, let's say it had been somebody who affiliated with the libertarian movement in some way, shape, or form. Like Tim McVeigh. Like Timothy McVeigh, who who was a party uh, member. A party member. You, when you become a party member of the Libertarian Party, you sign a pledge. It's called the Non-Aggression Principle, which says that you do not advocate the use of violence for to achieve political or social goals. So that the ends don't justify the means, or the means don't justify the ends, or whichever that you know what I mean is yeah. that you just can't just can't do whatever. It's it's libertarians, true libertarians believe that using violence is wrong, mm-hmm. and we are nonviolent, uh, democratic non-violent people. Majority, you know, it doesn't give you that. There is no moral right gained because the majority want it. Exactly, and so uh, a violent figure like a Malcolm X to arm Martin Luther King, mm-hmm. who was nonviolent. Uh, and so somebody who would take a gun just because they may have been at libertarian movement meetings of some shape or form or variety, they would not be a libertarian. They can say they're a libertarian or that they're a, a righty, but they're not. Because yeah, it's bad. It's, it's bad brand association, but that wasn't the cause of it. Right. You, 
you uh, one bad skittle. You well, the non-aggression principle was started in the late in the early seventies because they Weather were, Underground. The, be, yeah, they were being targeted by the FBI and being investigated as a party, and so they instituted the non-aggression principle pledge, the Libertarian Pledge. To As satisfy a, J. Edgar Hoover and for exactly further right. investigation and infiltration. So, but it, it, it is something that is at the very core of the libertarian philosophy. And I just want to say that had this been somebody that was a libertarian member, I want everybody to understand that anybody that advocates for violence in any way, shape, or form, I don't care if it's followed up with, well, have they not committed violence upon us by aggressing against us because they are the state? No, you don't, you don't use violence as a tool for political or social goals that makes you unlibertarian you don't take up arms to achieve political or social goals so um the oppression can't be third party outsourced like it is right. in government it has exactly. to be direct one to one exactly right and uh this government is so massive and sprawling that um it, killing a congressman who's third in line in the house doesn't do anything it's 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 a persuasion deal guys you got to go out and win hearts it's counterproductive i mean it reinforces you know the it's like when a police officer dies the parade comes out you know yep. blue lives mm -hmm. matter everyone loves the police all of a sudden right yep it, it's totally counterproductive but the the response to this i can't help but think how different it had been and the crackdown that we would have seen on right groups yeah and and, and how much blame nobody blames Dur bernie sanders at all whatsoever no and he they doesn't deserve any. Be. I, I saw donald trump getting blamed yesterday i mean it was just it's, well it's he's just the one insane. inciting the rhetoric of course you know that's <sighs> in like several several prominent liberal commentators for msnbc and then oh, yeah. box and mother jones and uh, daily cost were saying isn't it the I can't help but appreciate the irony of people who oppose gun control being taken out with guns. And this is within the hour. Well, and uh, uh, let's all sit back and blow that to smithereens and then we'll get to cat. I'm sorry for, to cut you off. No, okay. Like the to, to raise the gun control issue. Uh, l l we'll get to guns in just a second. Let's go to Cat. I mean, because I don't think it's a, it, it just it's bizarre to blame other people for the actions of one individual. Yep. Well, and that point right there is so hypocritical because aren't isn't the left the ones who are really pushing the not all Muslims are terrorists thing? Mm -hmm. And just because somebody claims ISIS doesn't mean they're Muslim, so we shouldn't view Muslims that way. So why are they viewing us all the same? Because it's politically same. convenient and they can fundraise exactly. on it. Exactly. Right. So I just well, think that's extremely hypocritical. Oh, it always Somebody is. made a comment, was t talking about, well, guns need to be taken away, blah, blah, blah. But my thing is, I mean, if you look at... Thank God, because the criminals won't at, have them in. Well, look yeah. at the at like Europe. Meth. They've literally yeah. killed people by driving through crowds with knives. guns, knives, blowing things up. They haven't been using guns in Europe, and they're still killing lots of people. Yeah. Like, it doesn't matter. It, had, it really doesn't matter. If someone wants to kill you, and they're they They're going to do it. Right. Exactly. Exactly. There is nothing you can do to stop someone from killing you if they really want to unless yep. you can kill unless you have better force than they do and, yeah. and and you know we are outsourcing the protection of these congressmen to capital police officers so what you're doing in, instead of saying let's encourage you to protect yourself with your own firearm from martinarmory.com <laughs> you uh, <laughs> you are outsourcing to a capital police officer who then has to sacrifice their life for yours and luckily but, they didn't have and, to and then yeah. and then on top of that we as taxpayers have to pay for all that. Like it, it the irony, uh, it's not even irony, it's just flat out stupidity mm. to sit there and look at this situation and go, guns caused this. No, guns stopped this. Because mm -hmm. Rand, Rand Paul was right. Had there not been two Capitol Police officers, the officers there with weapons, combating somebody with weapons, then it would, would have been have, like the Iranian parliament where yeah. a suicide bomber went in and it killed would have, 12. Well, yeah, it would have been a massacre. Even, I mean, even with that, though, like if you're playing baseball, what are the chances you're going to have your gun strapped on sure. you? There's not that. So I think it doesn't matter. Like if the police hadn't been there, it would have been a lot worse than. Well, and I anything. think it's interesting, though, is like I said, I feel like I know the um, response to all of these discussions just from things I've seen from people my own age. But their thing is, yes, guns saved the situation and made it 
it stopped it from being way worse but guns caused it in the first place but i'm sorry that uh, people uh, say we can't we can no longer tolerate the stupidity of the young Mm -hmm. and the stupidity of the left the fact is is that guns are never going to not be around you cannot in a in a country with as they're banned in chicago illinois and that place is a war zone and this an actual war zone yeah this guy it is illegal to when we had the libertarian convention in missouri and in st louis we had to tell all of the members of the Libertarian Party of Indiana, do not drive across state lines with your guns. You will go to jail. Mm-hmm. And this guy bought two weapons in Illinois. He really? is, yeah. He it's is hard, very hard to the do. poster child for why gun control doesn't work. It's yeah. just, it's maddening. If it did, then we wouldn't have, you know, well, any of the problems we do. If, if banning things worked... We wouldn't have like mass drug use. Well, we wouldn't have. Honest. We wouldn't have the Kennedys because that's how they got rich. It's Prohibition. Such a, it's yeah. just such a kindergarten r- logic to say that if we just get rid of guns, it's not. That's a not how policy works. No, it's an I, easy thing to it, take. It's not guns. Like I think it's the violence that's been accepted in culture. Like you look at all of the. Um, you look at the movies that are like there's so much violence everywhere like it permeates everything the news is full of violence your movies are full of violence if it bleeds your it game leads shows are full of, like everything is full of violence like, you're literally just surrounded facebook is full of violence. like again it's, facebook somebody killed somebody on live on facebook yeah. live like violence is everywhere and it's so like saturated into our culture it's almost normal like it's normal to wake up and hear a news story about five people being killed somewhere in the world well, because of violence like it's just normal and it's just becoming more and more the norm and it's not okay yeah and from some of my news classes at, at ball state is we're taught the structure of reporting news and it's you report the worst thing first yeah and it, maybe because it's breaking or what it, it needs well, to be we're said so first, desensitized to shock value it's it it's brings a, people it's in. competition or like a race to the top i mean you turn on there's a reason yeah like small town usa the front news uh story is you know kitten rescued from a tree whereas you know what i mean but it's yeah. like you it's terrible <sighs> Yeah, horrible stuff. Well, nobody cares about... Everyone loves to talk about, oh, wasn't that sweet? But then when somebody sees a massive wreck on 465, they're all looking. Exactly. There's an instinct to rubberneck and look at shocking things. It's it's the human condition. We're fascinated by... And it's it's out of care. It's unnormal. It's not normal. Right. That's the real Mm -hmm. thing, is that we're always going to look at what is not usual. It's it's becoming normal. Well, but it's... You just have to keep upping the ante. I I just... I I think that it's become... The images are becoming more normal, but the truth is is that if you go back and you you really study history, we live at a time where we are shielded from death more than any other period in history. Our wars have theme music. We we (laughs) are not... We are not like we would have a hundred years ago holding funerals in our front room where our ancestors, Mm. our, our grandparents would be laying there for days. We're not, you know, we're not laying in, we're not carrying the dead bodies of our parents out to a cart. We won't even show them on the news if they come the back from Iraq. Exactly mm-hmm. right. You know, so we we are shielded from death and violence more than we ever are. And I would advocate for more real violence as opposed to fake violence. And I think that human beings are, in trading that off, it, we are really losing humanity and empathy and understanding the consequences of our decisions by not choosing to see uh, the real cost of war. You watch something, that, and that's why I think you have something like Vice on HBO that takes off, is because they're willing to go and show you what is actually happening in the world and not shield you from the truth. Right, and I, I mean, that's completely true. And if you if you think about it, I mean, I guess it's, I'm every, I'm every bit as guilty of it because like I don't look at things that aren't wild and outrageous and it's continual <laughs> right. pushing of the envelope to to get me to even care, right? Yeah. You know, and like that that's just. The, but I mean, I don't think that that's some you you. I'm to blame for it. I don't think you're to blame for it. I think it's part of the human experience. Yep. But if you've ever seen the movie Goodwill, you ever seen Goodwill Hunting? I haven't. Have you heard of Robin Williams' cat? I know he's. Robin Williams, it's such a yes. good movie. Yes, it is. You it, do know I feel Robin like I've Williams seen that movie. Is. And there's of course Ma- I do. Okay. You've seen it. It's a good. I movie. think I have. You think so? Okay, yeah, it's like Ben Affleck and Matt Damon. Like they wrote it, and it's what made him stars. Yeah, it's a good, good movie. So in that, he's plays a psychologist, and oh, the yeah, court of sci- or um, an MIT professor wants him to work with Matt Damon. He's a mathematics savant, but he needs therapy to kind of get over some issues, and so he's also genius. So he is talking to the psychologist and trying to, sh- you know, show that he's not smarter than him, and he can even get in his head. And he, you know, Robin Williams says that I thought about what you said to me and I thought it made me lose sleep all night. And then I realized that you're the kind of person that could tell me every fact about what the Sistine Chapel, the history around it, every date and everything. But you can't tell me what it meant. You can't tell me how it smells, how it feels. And that's sort of like where we are as a society is we can 
we don't experience things, but we can tell you all about them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You don't ever, it never hits you or it never hits home because there's no impact. To you. Yeah. The, the human impact doesn't exist, but you, it's an abstraction. You can, like uh, Tucker Carlson all night last night was talking about, describe to me what it was like. Mm -hmm. And the thing was, it was almost so shocking to him. He couldn't even conceive of what that type of environment was like. Yeah. When the reality is that's every street on the east side of Indianapolis after 11 p.m. Absolutely. Yeah, right. We yeah, have that's entire, a reality. We have an entire generation of, uh, of black Americans who are growing up like that. Exactly. exactly. You know, and that's East Chicago is a war zone. Yep. US 41 heading to Chicago where they actually have like the riot gear out in yeah, Juliet, Illinois. And then we wonder why Ferguson happens. Right. But people yeah. don't go there. Right. You know, the people won't go. Like we talk about Gary like we know it. Right. None of us have ever been on Gary at 11 o'clock on a Friday night. Never. God, no. Um, <laughs> yeah. No way. And, and I think that's why, um, mm -hmm. you know, I listened to coverage all day yesterday of, of this. Uh, and, you know, so many of the congressmen were open about what what they saw and what they were, they were talking about it and describing it and all that. But it wasn't until I was listening to POTUS Politics, which if you don't have Sirius XM... You sh it's worth the internet subscription just for POTUS politics. If you love the show, you'll love that channel. Um, and they played the entire Joe Barton uh, talking about his sons and... The human elements of it. And I'm getting goosebumps now because of it. Because that was the moment when that, that rush of empathy, that warm feeling in the middle of me went, oh, these are people. Boom. You know, and, and I had listened to the facts all day long, but it hadn't hit me that... Here's a young boy that is traumatized by seeing his mm -hmm. friends get shot. Why do I not consider these? We consider Rand Paul a person. Mm -hmm. yep. We love Rand Paul as libertarians, but, you know. Uh, somebody, it doesn't realize that he was sitting there swinging a bat with an aide, and there was a real-life gun shoot, like, OK Corral shootout. Right. It does, you know, it doesn't impact you no matter what you say because right. you can't feel it. But I, could, you know, I can tell you that at seven nineteen, Alexandria police responded to a call, right. and mm -hmm. I have no idea what it feels like to be scared of by this, right? And that's what we we just don't experience things in in person anymore. I read the eyewitness or the account of a guy who got shot and lived at the Pulse nightclub shooting, and it was the one of the worst things I've ever read because just the way he described it, like how he heard the the two hours that he was there like he got shot in the back and shielded himself under a couch and asked the police for help and they couldn't help him because they couldn't come in yet and he heard all the dead people's cell phones ringing and it was just like all of it really hit him you can't yep. you can't you don't know what that we have no like. yeah we have no concept of it and like that's the thing too is like people that are very anti-muslim like two what uh, two years ago there was a yemeni wedding and we authorized a drone strike while they were getting married and so, so you think pulse nightclub they go in with like a you know an right. ISIS, a pledged isis member goes and shoots a bunch of homosexuals horrible imagine being there at your wedding last march we're sitting there at you know scottish right mm -hmm. and in comes a drone strike and we're all dead like exactly. there's I can't action, conceive it. Yeah, and there's nobody a movie that has cares. that. What movie is it? There's one of the one of the action movies has that. Hmm. Might be but, like London Has Fallen or something. Yeah. Oh, is well, White House Down? Maybe White House Down. Like yeah. That. There, there was something like the, you just can't conceive of that thing like, in yeah. our world. There yeah. was a, we're so cocooned from it. There was a video that I posted in the We Are Libertarians group, but I'm sure you can find it in uh, on YouTube. And uh, I didn't realize, I mean, YouTube, you it's like Wikipedia. You go down one of these rabbit holes oh and you God. get stuck forever. Next thing you know, you're listening to Alex Jones and Googling <laughs> Doppler technology. Yeah. Right. And then Megyn Kelly asks if you want to come on our show. <laughs> <laughs> so, and this, and so I found um, actual rebels doing the rebel yell, people who are on video, videotape, excuse me, who had uh, fought in the Civil War, which led me to an eyewitness on a 50s TV show oh, talking about the uh, Lincoln assassination, assassination how he theater. was a boy, which led me to a, a wonderful voice recording of Joseph Hazelton, uh, who was an errand boy at Ford's Theater who knew John Wilkes Booth. And uh, the video is titled, Eyewitness to Lincoln's Assassination Tells of Booth's Escape. And it is this amazing recording of this guy telling the story of what the scene was like in Ford's Theater as Lincoln was assassinated. I've read that story a hundred times in my lifetime. We've heard it in history class. Seen the memorial. Yep. It was the Ford's Theater. It wasn't until this man told the eyewitness account of what it was like in that theater that I felt what the trauma of Lincoln's assassination was for the nation. 
I, I mean, it just was, it was a really powerful and gripping piece of audio that you should go and check out on YouTube. Oh, I mean, it's, it's incredible because the Lincoln trail or the train trail that he, like they brought his body across and he stayed the night at the state house, uh, here in Indianapolis. And it goes right through Irvington kind of, uh, North right. of us 40. And they, you know, just account after account, they're going through rural parts of the country and people are just out on their knees, like sobbing and can you imagine if President Trump got shot? <laughs> people would be there'd be Facebook statuses celebrating. It'd no, be there'd like, be there'd live people celebrating. It, it, yeah. it would be it would be nine eleven in Palestine. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. It'd be cheers of you know vindication and you know God is great. But that's the difference. You know, it's just because we've become so not removed. Just we become desensitized for sure but then also we don't experience anything ever because even when we're at like even when you go on vacation or even when you like are going and yeah. doing something right you can't wait to take a selfie because you you document the whole thing mm -hmm. but you never paid attention the yeah. best right. vacation i ever took was when we went on a caribbean cruise and did not buy the internet package it was the best week of my life and i almost did not turn my phone back on right and you don't even care that you don't have pictures i mean no. or, i mean or you have pictures we have you didn't care pictures. that you didn't have likes oh yeah i didn't care i didn't have likes i didn't care that my friends had no idea what i was doing or my mom didn't know like i just didn't care it was great it was freeing you right. just feel so like in the moment in the moment i felt very zen yeah well no i mean and then that's not like you know not having to you can't check the phone you can't check like, the likes yeah, like we need to do can. another selfie in front of this you know this cliff yeah. because the last one the lighting was shit and i don't want it as my cover photo well that may have happened all right but we well, you're still petty cameras yeah, no you could it's, no, but i mean you couldn't like in while yeah, you're standing there yeah, trying yeah, to go see yeah. the whales Oh, we've only got 13 likes. What the fuck? Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. I actually never do that, but you delete you delete uh, cool. photos that don't get enough likes, cat. No. You repost at better times. No. I don't. Is that a fidget spinner? No. No. It's cool. no. It's a fidget it's a, putty. Fidget putty. It's a fidget putty, basically. Yeah. <sighs> um, the the two of us are so ADD, we can't. Yeah. Uh, we have to play with our hands. Otherwise, so. I won't remember <laughs> anything we talked about today. Yeah. Because <laughs> she will be nervous. They actually say though, as long. Uh, a lot of people that way if it's indirect what you're listening to or processing information because you're busy doing that you retain more yep that's yeah. how i am well and it's just tangent but it just annoys me how everyone is like i'm so add look at my fidget spinner like <laughs> you don't have adhd you just want to have the new cool toy and it actually makes you even worse it's the nerd glasses for girls with no lenses exactly you know yeah. well, i'm such a dork that's why i like and spangle, take a picture of the book right and spangle at the day job he's got a fidget cube and i love that thing because it's just in your hand and you're just it's like worry listening. balls that have been around for like you know centuries like, right. you know, like buddhist worry balls that they you know it helps them get calm and like get still i kind of want to be a buddhist so it looks like yeah. i'm having like a play How date brave. Over here, but <laughs> <laughs> so go read Siddhartha. you know and this is a tangent or not tangent but like and it's not scientific at all but i kind of feel like the prevalence of autism is a result of the flood of information mm -hmm. because autistic kids cannot it's just too much it's overwhelming and i feel like they intensely process information in a way that is almost a step forward in human evolution our people well i mean it's like what are we flooded with information that's what overwhelms us causes us anxiety we have to learn how to manage and adjust to for them the sheer amount of information they're processing is way more than a regular individual and I think that could be very likely be a biological response to the amount of the flood of information because like our eyes take in two billion of the twenty billion bits of information every second it takes in. Yeah, and they take in more and are more sensitive to um, the severity of it. They're not able to tune it out. Yeah. All right. <laughs> like a podcast about libertarianism. <laughs> <laughs> Never ends. Uh, all right. All right. So 